Right, we're going to do a bending moment and that will finish us off for this uh, complex beam arrangement. So I'm just sketching it out again. Shear force is on the left, you can see that. Let's concentrate on bending moment now. Um, <coughs> it's not too bad bending moment. It gets a bad name, I suppose, but it's not too bad. To work out bending moment, we're going to have to, when we worked out the reactions, we had to put in these equivalent point load uh, values for the UDL. I'm just going to put the distances in again. It's one meter between the edge of there and RA, and RA was 58.9 recurring, and RB was 81.1 recurring. Um, it was one and a half meters between RA and 40. It was two meters between 40 and 20. It was one meter between 20 and RB. Then it was one and a half meters between RB and 10. So putting in, working out the uh, <coughs> uh, bending moment points, th it naturally lends itself to working them out at this point. Let me choose a better color. This point, nope, that's a, a mess. Working them out at RA, we're working out at this 40 kilonewton point load, the 20 and at RB will not work it out at 10 because these are free ends and the bending moment at a free end equals zero um, so yeah we don't need to work it out for that end for, the, for, the, for that end so just to recap we're going to work out bending moment at this point this point this point and this point uh, and it's not too difficult really it's more awkward with the UDL on, but that's the whole point of doing this tutorial. So let's work it out then. So for the bending moment at RA, consider either left hand side or right hand side. We've got a luxury here. We can either look at that side at beam, which is fairly straightforward, or which would be the left hand side, or we could look at this side at beam which would be horrendous because there's four forces and a UDL to worry about which would be the right hand side always choose the easiest so we're going to go for the right hand, uh, left hand side <laughs> nearly um, so bending moment at RA consider left hand side very easy to work this out now um, so for the left of RA so that's the pivot if you like at RA we've just got a UDL acting over one metre and <coughs> the equivalent point load then, if it's 10 kilonewtons for every metre, that's from before, the UDL is 10 kilonewtons per metre run. And that's um, all the way across the beam. So we've got 10 kilonewtons acting over one metre, and that gives us a point load of 10 kilonewtons. <coughs> right? We haven't done, we haven't done any bending moment yet, we've just converted a UDL into a point load. Either way, we know that that 10 kilonewtons is half a metre from RA because it acts centrally to the to the run it's acting over so in this case we've got um, force times lever arm if you like to get a moment so we've got 10 kilonewtons times its lever arm to this pivot point of 0 0.5 that's going to give us an answer of um, what am I doing right here one 0 0.5 10 times 0 0.5 is going to be 5 kilonewton meters. We're going to use engineering judgment to assess this because we need to write down whether it's going to sag or hog at that point. Now sagging is of course when something sags and hogging is when something wants to go the other way. It kind of raises up. Now plotting on what we think, what I think this beam is going to deflect, it will probably do that. It will sag in the middle, hog there. So it will hog over here, sag in the middle, hog over here. Let's see. So I'll just undo that so it's a bit cleaner. Um, <coughs> so on this beam then, if you allowed that arrow to push down, it would deflect in that, that manner. It would bend like that, like a diving board. I've drawn it really exaggerated. But that, if you imagine mirroring it over, that is a hog. right? Sags are that way, hogs are that way. That's a hogging moment. So that's 5 kilonewton meters of hog. That's good because it shows us which side of our bending moment diagram above or below the line to plot it. But for the time being, let's just carry on because it'll make more sense when we look at the other um, force.
resources and values. Either way, that's that one done. I'll put a line through that. So we've done uh, bending moment at RA. The next bending moment is this one um, at the 40 kilonewton point load. So for bending moment at 40 kilonewton point load, um, we'll consider. Do we go left hand side or right? We'll go left again because there's less forces. So I'll consider left hand side. I'll sketch it out. <coughs> um, so this time, that's the 40 kilonewton point load. This doesn't have any influence on it in terms of bending moment because it's pushing directly on the pivot point. So it's like you were on a seesaw and stood bang on the middle. Your force would be going down. Bending moment is about how much something wants to turn. If you're stood bang on the pivot, you're not turning anything. You just stood there. You're pushing down, sure, but pushing down is different to turning. Right? If you were on the end of the seesaw, nowhere near the pivot, sure enough, you'd be going clockwise or anti-clockwise. But um, if you stood on the pivot, you're just pushing down. So the 40 is bang on the pivot, so it's not included. We've just got RA and this UDL to worry about. So we know that RA is 58.9 recurring. And we know that it's 1.5 metres from this pivot point. We've then got this goddamn UDL, which is acting two and a half metres. That's the one metre there and a metre and a half there. I've drawn it quite badly. That would be shorter at this end. Um, so we've got a metre at that end and one and a half. So that's two and a half metres. And it's 10 kilonewtons for every metre. So 10 kilonewtons oops, uh, for every metre run. And it's two and a half meters. Must means an equivalent point load there of twenty five meters. Uh, twenty five kilonewtons. What am I about meters? It's even getting to my head now. I've done, I've done that much of this. Um, that acts in the middle of this run of UDL. So the middle of it, if it's two and a half meters in total, um, the middle of it, of course, must be half of two and a half, which would be one point two five. <coughs> okay, so let's work out bending moments then. So we'll just look at the um, RA value first. So let's say we've got RA as uh, 58.9 times by its distance to the lever arm, which is 1.5. Gives us a value of, um, so 58.9 recurring I should put times 1.5 equals 88.5 give or take kilonewton meters and we're going to assess <coughs> if that's sag or hog so ignoring the UDL pushing down we're just looking at this for the time being that's pushing up so that would deflect in that kind of shape right? it would bend like that so if you mirrored that over that's a sagging shape so it's 88.5 sag. That's all well and good. I'm just going to undo that so it's a bit cleaner. So that's 88.5 sag. Now we've got to do the UDL. So I'll change colour. Um, which will be 25 kilonewtons times by its distance of 1.25 equals. So 25 times 1.25 equals. 31.25 and if you allowed that to push down um, that would bend the beam that way it, you know if it'd be like someone jumping on the middle of a diving board and it's fixed here so it'd bend that way if we mirror that over that's definitely hogging it's an upside down hog moment so I'm just going to undo that to make it clearer so that's hog kilonewton meters. Now what to plot on our bending moment diagram <coughs> in if all things were equal in a fight between sag versus hog we've got 88.5 sag in a fight or a tug of war or whatever with <coughs> 31.25 hog we need to work out who would win and by how many so we've got 88.5 sag Sag are going to win because there's more of them. 
So 88.5 take away 31.25 gives us a equivalent then an overall winner we're going to have 57.25 kilonewton meters sag so on our diagram we'd plot that value so this one is as it is because there's no no balancing act to do on this one we've had to do sag versus hog and we've ended we'll end up plotting a sagging moment of 57.25 all right let's carry on there's only two more left to do um so for this 20 kilonewton uh, point load, that's this one, Oops. we've got, um, so for bending moment at 20 point load, we'll do right hand side this time, consider right hand side, there's less forces so it makes sense. So we've got, um, let's draw it on, that's the pivot there. We've got RB uh, coming up of 81.1 oops 81.1 kilonewtons coming up and we've got this UDL um, of acting over two and a half meters which will give us an equivalent of 25 again uh, I've run out of room there let's just make some room got pivot there we've got um, where is it RB coming up 81.1 kilonewton meters we've got a UDL acting all the way across it giving us an equivalent of 25 um, that's going to be 1.25 away and then we've also got this 10 on the end so there's three forces we're gonna have to juggle here um, <coughs> fine that's no threat to us we know what we're doing so I've got um, 81.1 recurring times by its distance to the pivot and it is one meter I believe yep that's right so 81 times 1 is going to give us an answer 81.1 recurring kilonewton meters meters um, if we allowed if that's the uh, ignore the other forces if we pushed up with this it deflect that way which would be a sagging moment next we've got this 25 UDL so we've got 25 times by 1.25 um, that will be the same value as before which was 31.25 If we let ignore the other forces, if we push down on that, that would bend it that way, which would be hogging. And then we've got the 10 kilonewtons times by its distance to the pivot, which is going to be um, one meter there and one and a half there, which would be 2.5, which would give us a total of 25 kilonewton meters. And ignore the other forces for a minute. If that were allowed to push down, that would be hogging. So <coughs> again, if we've got sag versus hog, uh, we've got 81.1 recurring sag, take away 31.25 hog, take away another 25 hog, gives us a total a victory for SAG again of 24.861 kilonewton meters and SAG wins. So SAG's outnumbered both of the hog moments there by 24.861 so that's the value we'd plot there. And then finally <coughs> just the bending moment at this side we'll consider it right hand side bending moment for RB. So um, bending moment at RB uh, let's consider right hand side I'll give you a quick sketch again so that's RB there we've got a UDL acting over a meter and a half and then we've got a 10 kilonewton point load 
Um, <coughs> so the UDL is 25 acting in middle. No, it's not. It's 15 acting in middle because it's 10 kilonewtons for every uh, metre run. So 10 times 1.5 is 15. And it's acting half of 1.5, which is 0 0.75. So we've got 15 times by 0 0.75. <coughs> Excuse me. 11.25 kilonewton meters and if you ignore the other forces but if you allowed that to push down it'd be hogging I'm using engineering judgment to work out if it's sagging or hogging there are more complex ways of doing this which will will tell you um, so now we're going to do the 10 uh, kilonewtons times by its distance of one and a half which is going to be of course 15 kilonewton meters and the 10 is going to push down that's going to hog as well um, it'll bend that way so we've got a total hogging moment of 15 plus 11.25 um, that's going to give us a total hogging moment of 26.25 kilonewton meters hog that's the hard bit done um, for the diagram then uh, <coughs> I'll draw it on um, usually you'd, you'd draw it lined up the diagrams are hard to draw because um, let's just get it drawn again so that's R A R B we have that that and that as a UDL across um, that was 40, I think, that's 20, and that's 10. Um, yeah, so drawing on the uh, bending moment diagram. It's up to you if you want to draw sagging below the graph or above it. Usually positive bending is sagging and negative is hogging, so it might look upside down to what you'd imagine, but you can draw it either way around as long as you... Long, I'll write here, that's sagging, that's hogging. So at the first point, RA, we worked out that there was a 5 kilonewton meter hog. So I'm going to come down, these want to line up really. Um, if you drew this to scale, it would be nothing like these proportions anyway, I've made a real mess. But at RA, it's hogging 5 kilonewton meters. Fair enough. At the 40 <coughs> point load, we worked out it was sagging by 57 point two five so at this one it'd be up here you'd do it to scale you'd measure up five point seven centimeters or whatever so it's fifty seven point two five uh sagging that's fine kilonewton meters at the twenty kilonewton point load it had an overall sag of twenty four point eight six so at this one it had an overall sag of twenty four point eight six and then at um RB it had a hog of 26.25 it had a hog down here 26.25 and it's below here because it's on the hog inside of the graph UDLs <coughs> if there weren't a UDL there it would join up like that in straight lines but because there's a UDL it joins in, in a curve like a bouncing ball so it's starting here because that's the end of the beam and it's ending here and bending moment at free end is always zero. So that's zero and that's zero. And it comes along like that and it curves down and it bounces up and it hits that point, comes down, hits that point and bounces up again like a bouncing ball. Now mine's of course not in proportion, it's not drawn very well. But if you draw yours properly, use a CAD package or use an app or use, you know, better drawing skills than, than just a rough sketch on a wobbly screen. Uh, <coughs> that's basically how you draw a um, bending moment diagram for a UDL on a complex beam. There you go, if, if you get stuck, just watch it again. Thank you.